Welcome back. This is lesson three of Machine Learning Zoom Camp session six. And in this lesson, we will talk about decision trees. So in the previous lesson, we prepared the data set. So now this data set is ready to use. And we want to use this data set to predict if customers are going to default or not, meaning if they will not be able to pay back the loan. We want to use decision trees for that. So decision tree is a data structure that looks like that. We have um, a node here. So here we have some condition. And then depending whether this condition is true or false, if it's true, we go to the right. And if it's false, we go to the left. And then we repeat it again. So here we can have some conditions again and again. And finally, at the end, we need to make a decision. So let's say we do have a bunch of conditions. And then at the end, we make a decision. Okay, this is default and this is OK. And uh, here, the decision could be also the default. And here, OK, and default. The condition can be, so let's say, let's think, uh, if we talk about our data set, for example, records so let's say if we already know that this customer has previous records so records yes if this is true we go here if this is false if, if the client doesn't have any records then we go this way right then another condition could be if job is part-time see so i'll remove this to make it a bit simpler so let's say if uh, the customer has records and job is part-time then the decision could be a default if uh, the job is not part-time, then the decision is okay. And so, for example, here on the left, uh, the condition could be how much money they have, like assets, more than, let's say, uh, 6,000. Yeah, so this number is arbitrary, of course, and I don't really know what it means. But this is a good example of decision tree. So, and... Um, if we take this decision tree, we can see that a bunch of if then else rules. So let's say if we have a customer who has records, then we go to the right. If they have a full-time job, they, we go to the left. We can encode this with if then else rules. So for example, uh, we can create a function that is called assess risk and we get a record here. And uh, so here first we check if they have records or not. So if client uh, records, um, Yes, and then if it's the case, we go here, this part. So now we need to check if client job part-time. If the job is part-time, then we think uh, they are going to default. So return default. Else, we are here. If the job is not part-time, then we are going to return OK. And now we need to you know, handle this part. If records is no what happens so then we check if client assets greater than six thousand if it is the case we return okay else we return default right. so this is how we can represent this decision tree this decision tree in python code and let's say we can take uh, the first record turn it to dictionary so this is the first record. Um, so they have uh, um, a lot of assets. They don't have a full-time job, but it's not a part-time job either. So let's take this uh, XI and then use assess risk on this client. The decision tree that we just created says that this customer is going to be fine. They have any records. So they don't have any records, right? But they have um, 10,000 in assets. So this is how we arrive at this um, decision. Okay, and we can uh, train this. So here we just encoded this manually and these rules can be learned from the data. So we can learn these rules from the data using the decision tree algorithm. So let's quickly see how to do this. So we use scikit-learn and then there is model called tree. And in this module, we have decision tree classifier. Decision trees can also be used for regression, for solving the regression problem. But here we have a classification, binary classification problem. We have a default and non-default. So that's why we need the classifier. What we also need is actually we need, um, because we have categorical variables. So we also need a dictionary vectorizer, feature extra extraction, import, 
dictionary with razor. And then, uh, so now we need to turn our training data frame into a list of dictionaries and then turn this list of dictionaries into, into a feature matrix. And then after that, we'll train a model. So let's do that. Train dictionaries, train, train. We will just take all the features from here. So just everything that we have here. We will not select any features here. We'll just take everything as this. So predict records, train. Let's take a look at the first five. Yeah, looks correct. So now what we need to do is train the dictionary vectorizer. Sparse false. X train is the dictionary vectorizer will fit transform. Train dictionaries. Transform. Yeah, and now we have our feature matrix. Let's also take a look at the feature names we get. All the numerical features are left intact, and then we have encoding for categorical features. Cool. So now we can actually train our decision tree. So let's call this variables decision tree, decision tree classifier. And then here we use the pit method, like usual, train, train. And then it complains about missing values. So it says input contains none. That's why we so remember we had these nines and we replaced them with uh, NAs. So let's just quickly do fill NA zero. Let's just fill them with zeros. Three around this whole thing. Okay, so now we have our three and let's test it. So we'll use the validation data set. So validation dictionaries. And we create X validation using dictionary vectorizer. And then we only transform and then it is and now why diction is our decision tree predict proba x validation data set. Now what we want to do is compute AUC uh, score area under the AUC curve. Let me add the import here from scikit-learn matrix import AUC AUC score. So we have y validation, y prediction, and of course here it says that. Uh, something is wrong it should be one dra but uh, right now it's a two-dimensional array so now it's two-dimensional array and we see that uh, there are ones and zeros uh, we'll uh, talk a bit about this a bit later now what we need to do is we need to take the first column uh, i mean the second column the probability of, of the customer belonging to the positive class now let's compute the RUC curve and we see that it's 65. It's not impressive. But let's see what is the AUC score for our training data set. So for our training data set, so let's do that. So here, we see that it's one. So we have on the training data set, we have one. And on the validation data set, we have 65. So this is called overfitting. And overfitting is when our model simply memorizes the data, but it memorizes it in such a way when it sees a new example, it is clueless. It doesn't know what to do with this example because it doesn't look like any of the memorized data points. So it memorizes the data, but fails to generalize because for new unseen examples, none of the memorized examples look like this new one. And just, okay, I don't know. And it outputs something completely incorrect, but failing to generalize. And uh, the reason this happens with decision trees, so let's say we have a decision tree and it looks like that. So we have a, a bunch of nodes here. And let's say we want to train this model to score a customer. So let's say we have this XI customer, right? And we know that um, this um, XI, they did default and let's say for this customer so let's say if um, home owner so then uh, let's say age is more than 35 and age age is less than 37 so this way we select only customers that uh, have age 36 and have home and then uh, let's say job freelance and depth let's say so they have zero depth so let's say uh, more than zero depth and with this rule so this rule is very specific and maybe only this one person ends here 
and they actually have quite a lot of assets, right? But they still, they, so they end up here and the model learned that this person, yeah, so I think the model learned that this person defaulted. And this rule is very specific. They have a house. They um, are 36 years old. They are freelancers. They have zero debt, yet they defaulted. And when we see a new user, uh, a new customer who has the same profile like that here, we will also think that they are going to default simply because of that. So here our model memorized the data. So it memorized that for this specific customer, they defaulted. So it learned that. And it has a rule like that for every record we have in our data set. That's why it memorized the data, but these patterns didn't hold true for the validation data set. That's why for the validation data set, our AUC was very bad, but on the training data set, it was excellent. So the model was able to classify everyone from the training data set correctly. And here, the reason it happened, if we can see this, so our tree is quite deep here. So it's uh, six, or seven. So basically, if we let our tree grow too deep, our model can learn any possible combination, any possible customer. And then at the end, when we have this decision, it will contain only just one or two uh, clients. So this way, we let our tree memorize the data. So here, depth is unrestricted. So it can go down as much as it wants. But if we restrict the depth, so let's say if we take... Uh, take a tree like that if we say we only want to have a tree that is on the three levels deep depth, uh, three then it will learn rules that are less specific so maybe here records yes so let's see what happens so what i want to do now is retrain the tree but control the depth of the tree. I'll let it grow only three levels and it will not be able to grow the fourth level. So when I do that, so let me... Yeah. So AC. So first we, let's say we check AC on the training data. AC. Train and then validation. And we see when we do that, if we restrict the depth of trees to three, then now the performance of our model on validation is significantly better. So it's 73 compared to 65. So it's so like 8% better. So and by restricting, by not letting the tree grow in definitely many levels, we actually achieve better performance. And we can even set the depth to one. Then, uh, yeah, the model we have is worse actually than what we have here. So if we restrict it to depth one, so we have a tree that looks like this. So there is some condition. And then here, let's say we say okay and here we say default and here is only one condition and this kind of tree is actually called a decision stump which is like a, not really a tree only one condition here but as you see this tree this decision stump is only a bit worse than this the uh, overfit one we can actually take a look at the tree. We can take a look at what is inside. What are the rules that it learned? There is a special uh, function that can help us, that can visualize the trees. Import expert text. So expert text. And then we pass the decision tree. Uh, we need to print it. Okay, so it says if the feature 25 is less than 0 0.5, then we predict default. If it's more than 0 0.5, we predict uh, okay. So to know what feature 25 actually means, we need to use our dictionary vectorizer feature names, dictionary vectorizer get feature names. Okay, and then it says if there are no records, then it's default. Yeah, actually, if there are records. So here, uh, remember that... Um, so this is one hot encoding. So let's say we have this records no column, and then it can be zero or one. Zero, it's when it's uh, not no, and one is when it's no. So here, this uh, records equals no more than 0 0.5 actually means that records is no. 
because we use one hot encoding here, this is how we translate this rule. So actually, the decision stamp it learned, the rule it learned was, so if records is yes, or let's see if it records no, if records is no, then class is zero. So it's okay. And if records is yes, then it's default. So records yes probably means that uh, there are records of this customer not paying back the loan, I guess, I don't know. So this is how our decision stamp that we just trained looks like. And then of course we can train, uh, let's say decision three with depth of two. And, uh, so now the even like two levels is already better than what we had previously. And let's visualize it. So this is how it looks like. Um, let me draw it. We have two levels. So the first condition is uh, records equals no. I am now talking about this part. Uh, so records no, and then uh, job part time. So if we don't have any records and then the job is not part time, then the, the class is zero. So meaning okay. And if job is part time, then class is default. And now let's translate this one. So here we have seniority, which is the number of years of experience. So it's seniority more than 6.5. So if seniority is more than 6.5, then the class is uh, okay. Otherwise it's default. Let me just copy this for reference. Okay, so this is the decision tree we learned with two levels. So here, max depth is equals two, and this is the decision tree we learned. And then we apply this decision tree, and then it turns out that AUC of this simple decision tree with just two levels is actually better than a decision tree that will let grow in indefinitely many layers. Yeah, so this is the rules it came up with. And in the next lesson, we will see how it actually manages to find rules like that, how it learns these rules, how it extracts these rules from data. We will see that in the next lesson. So see you soon.